What is up fellow nerds and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel. Now today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite Pokemon from the new generation and that is Dracozolt, the space chicken himself. Now Dracozolt is an absolutely hilarious looking mon. Um, I love all of the fossils, just the Frankenstein-esque, uh, just shove two Pokemon together and say yeah that's a Pokemon. I, I love that, I think it's great. Um, but this guy right here really stands out to me, and if he's not the strongest fossil, he's definitely the second strongest, and he is one of the strongest Pokemon right now in the metagame, and um, I absolutely love using him. He is so much fun to use, um, and so we're going to talk about today what makes him so strong and how you can implement him on, uh, on your team. So why is this guy so strong? So let's start by looking at his stats. His stats really aren't overwhelmingly good they aren't overwhelmingly bad um base 90 hp that's pretty good base 90 defense it's not bad it's not terrible uh, base 70 special defense eh, it's okay 75 speed very mediocre not that great base 100 attack you know better than some but not not crazy um so i mean this thing's stats are not bad at all but they are not phenomenal either so what makes this Pokemon so exceptional? So the first factor in this is its ability, Hustle. So what Hustle does is it basically gives you a choice band boost um, of 1.5 times to your attack. However, your accuracy is then lowered to 80% of what it would have been. So if a move is 100% accurate, it'll hit 80% of the time and uh, whatever the math would be for whatever appropriate move you're using. Um, so this trade-off really is insane because you are going to hit most of the time. Um, I have lost games where I missed before using this guy before, but for the most part, you are going to hit, and we're going to see if we can't turn missing into a good thing in some of these sets. Um, and so the other thing that makes this Mon so busted is his signature move. Now, he shares the signature move with Arctozolt. Um, that is the Mon that shares uh, the chicken upper half. And what... Uh, bolt beak here does so it is an 85 base power so that's not that bad electric type move so he gets stab on that but the power doubles if the user moves first double 85 that's insane power um so coming off of a hustle boost coming off of stab because of the electric typing it's it's insane this thing just makes everything drop and i'm going to give you some uh a, a couple notable um calcs here at the end especially when we look at this meme set uh my meme set is ridiculous but i also think that it would be absolutely insane to watch it happen um so i may i may see if i can get um something to happen with this meme set on a team on a real team and post that to the channel and i think that would be uh pretty great but we'll get there when we get there so let's start by looking at actually viable sets for this pokemon and the first one I, we're going to go with is a blunder policy set now blunder policy is a a uh, move or is an item that we mentioned in our flapple video because flapple also gets access to hustle so we've discussed this ability before on the channel but in case you haven't seen that episode by the way check out the flapple video i'll put that in the i card up above but the blunder policy, uh, if a move misses because your accuracy is low, then you go to plus two speed. That's really good for certain mods, especially this one where speed matters. If you go first, you double your power. You miss a move because of hustle on something switching in. Oh, well, you're now at plus two speed and you're going to kill it with bolt beak. It's insane. I'm pretty sure Bolt Beak also works on switches too, so if your opponent switches out into something else, I'm pretty sure you still get the double boost on Bolt Beak, which is also insane. Um, so yeah, this Pokemon is absolutely busted. Um, I don't think it's like so strong that it's going to get banned or anything, but it is really strong and I could definitely see it staying in OU. Um, we've got Outrage in our second slot for a second kind of stab on that Dragon Typing. Now, you could also run uh, Dragon Claw on any of these sets, but keep in mind that you are sacrificing um, 
sacrificing power. Um, but at the same time, you are gaining the ability to choose the move that you want next turn, assuming you kill with Outrage. You are also um, getting the freedom to not get confused at the end. Um, and so, you know, but I typically prefer to run Outrage just for the extra power. Um, 120 versus 80 may not sound like a lot, but it's actually huge. That's actually a very big difference in, in base power. And um, that can be the difference between a KO or not a KO, it being a two hit KO versus uh, a three or four. Um, it, it makes a difference. And so I typically try to run Outrage. That way we pick up those two hit KOs that we wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I really like that there. Um, Earthquake is a great ground type coverage move. I don't really need to explain Earthquake. Aerial Ace, I, I, do, I do. Now, a lot of people run low kick in spot in this spot. Um, I typically don't run low kick here. Um, and the reason is because I think Aerial Ace, and you can also run Pluck here if you'd rather run Pluck, but, um, and Pluck would, um, also have uh, the ability to have its accuracy lowered so you could activate your blunder policy easier but um, the reason we run aerial ace isn't necessarily to um, cover a weakness or anything it is in the it is in the event that we want to dynamax with draco's ult we can manually raise our own speed um, and so when you dynamax you gain secondary effects on all of your attacks Based on what, uh, based on what type they are, assuming they are attacking moves, which of course all of these are. So bolt beak actually is an interesting thing because it will get weaker, assuming you're faster than your opponent. If you are dynamaxed, the power is going down because you're not going to get that doubled 85 base power. Um, but aerial ace, uh, flying type moves actually boost your speed by one stage just for using the move, and so this gives. Draco's ult another way to raise its speed without having to rely on the blunder policy and so um, I, I think it's a great I think it's a great set um, and so on this set you could also run something besides blunder policy and we will talk about that in future sets but um, but I still think it's nice to be able to raise your own speed like this um, so that you're not having to rely on missing with hustle so the, the next set we're going to look at is a choice banded set. Now, this set is something that I recommend running with uh, like sticky webs or uh, tailwind or something like that, a way to boost your speed in another way. Um, we're still running aerial ace just so you can raise your own. And so this is a set that I would recommend dynamaxing with. Um, so you can dynamax, raise your own speed for uh, a turn two or three, and then start and then start just mashing bolt beak and you're just going to start watching things drop um an adamant choice banded bolt beak coming off of this thing it, it's absolutely insane watching the damage that happens um very few things can take a bolt beak and almost nothing can take two uh it's it's absolutely insane um one big counter to this pokemon is ferrothorn and that is why you would want to run low kick um but at the same time, I, th I think with the choice band set, it's a lot better to have that speed option. Um, and, you know, Bolt Beak isn't going to be doing all that much to a Ferrothorn. But we're going to talk about in the meme set, the meme set actually has a way to kill Ferrothorn. So I hope you're getting excited for this meme set. I'm pretty excited about it. So for the final uh, viable set, we're going to go with a Choice Scarf set. Now this one we changed to Jolly rather than Adamant because we're going for as fast as we can go. And on this set we're going to include Low Kick. This way we actually have a way to deal with Ferrothorns. Um, now you need to keep in mind that Low Kick does not affect anything Dynamaxed or Gigantamaxed. So do not try to use this move on something like Gigantamax Snorlax, which uh, just was released uh, yesterday. So I hope you all are out in raids getting that. Um, but so don't use this on uh, on a Gigantamax Snorlax. If you see a Snorlax coming in, at least for the next little while, it's probably Gigantamax. Probably don't kick. Probably don't press low kick. Probably not a good idea. But uh, but besides that, um, I think low kick is really great for helping you deal with things like Ferrothorn, uh, which otherwise would just completely wall you. All right, so 
meme set time. Now this is a set that you should probably never run, but this is an absolutely crazy tech, okay? So I'm going to pull up a, uh, a calc here. I'm looking at a calc on my other monitor here. So if you are to, uh, to go for substitute, right? On the switch in to Ferrothorn. Heck, you don't even have to have substitute on this set if Ferrothorn's gonna be switching in. You could just go straight for the, that's right, charge. Now, <laughs> charge is a move that gets basically no play ever because it's just not that good. Um, it's it's very situational, I guess, is, is the better way to put it. But what charge does is it raises your special defense by one, uh, one stage and your electric type moves get boosted by two times in the next turn. So, if we are to go with an adamant hustle set here um, on our Draco Zolt, and we get a Ferrothorn switching in, we do, on, uh, on the charged set, uh, if we have already charged up, we do a minimum of 60% to Ferrothorn. That's insane. We could do 60% minimum to a Ferrothorn. Now, this, um, depending on what you roll both times, it's possible that this could end up being a two-hit KO if you are charged that first time and then go for Boltbeak. Boltbeak could be a two-hit KO on Ferrothorn, which is absolutely insane because otherwise even with the um, doubled power you don't even have a guaranteed three hit ko on a ferrothorn um, and so that thing can just set up all kinds of stuff all over you but if you go for charge on its way in and uh just start just start wrecking it with uh with bolt beak uh yeah that thing will absolutely drop and it is hilarious to watch now um, the reason that you would want to run substitute on this set, I think, is for things other than Ferrothorn. Um, this thing does force switches into walls a lot of the time. And a lot of walls nowadays are running Will-O-Wisp. Especially things like Galarian Corsola, things like uh, Galarian Weezing. Those are all running Will-O-Wisp. The substitute forces them to make uh, a different move. They have to hit you with something first before they can burn you. And this gives you a chance to actually set up the charge or you can just start firing off bolt beaks. Um, obviously you can't hit Galarian, uh, Galarian Weezing with Outrage, but you could start firing off a bolt beak and really chunk something with, uh, with this. Um, I have the Figgy Berry here as the uh, item just because you are raising your special defense. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily the best item for, for this set. Um, you know, Life Orb wouldn't really work because you have a substitute. You could also run something like Leftovers, um, but I think it'd be nice to have that recovery since you are kind of making yourself a little more bulky. Um, so yeah, I think that either a Figgy Berry or the Leftovers would work just fine on this meme set. And, uh, I may try to build a team around this set just to see if I can get, get one game to happen. Um, but anyway, I wanted to go ahead and tell you about something coming up later today so this video will be going up in the morning and this afternoon i will have a showdown live for you uh using a team that i built around draco Zolt. i've really been loving um using this mon and so i chose it for um for my first my first set um also something to keep in mind is galler beginnings is very very soon it is coming up uh very quickly and uh, I believe I will be live streaming that on here on the YouTube channel. Um, so you can do, we can do 15 battles a day. And so I will probably just be live streaming that whole thing. And so you'll get to watch me uh, hopefully win a few. You'll get to watch me lose a bunch, um, but we're gonna learn a lot about it together. I am typically not a uh, battle spot player of the whole pick three kind of thing i'm normally a 6v6 player that is where i that is where i shine really um and so you know we're gonna we're gonna get through this learning experience together um also let me know what you think about uh a video about the vgc rules now vgc is the doubles 
um, official rules for uh, for Pokemon. It's what Worlds consists of. It is uh, it is really the official rules for how uh, how Pokemon is played at tournament settings. Um, and those rules were just released today. So uh, if you guys want a video about that, just uh, just let me know. And uh, anyway, uh, I believe that is going to be it for this video. Um, stick around, uh, make sure to subscribe to uh, make sure that you see when the other video goes up today. Um, and I am also working on um, the other video, which is the master breeding guide um, from beginning to end, how to create competitive Pokemon. I think I'm going to end up splitting it into several different videos and make it into a little series. Um, I still don't know what to call it yet, but I have basically planned out the entire thing and um, I'm going to start recording um, all of those parts very soon. Um, and those will come in addition to the current uploads. Um, those uploads may come like in really quick succession, all of those at once, so that you can really watch the process all at once if you want to, or just one at a time, or watch one video um, over the other, whatever, uh, whatever suits your fancy there. So yeah, that is going to be it for now. I will see you guys in the showdown live later today. I hope you guys are looking forward to that. But until then, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and all of that good stuff. Bye-bye.